In this video, we're going to look at cybersecurity incidents. By the end of the videos, you should be able to understand what a cybersecurity incident is, understand the process of incident response, and then understand the role of computer forensics, which we'll look at in subsequent videos and what role that plays in incident response. So an incident is any event that has compromised confidentiality, integrity, or availability of an organization's assets. From a Verus perspective, and Verus is a cybersecurity incident database, an incident is the result of an actor taking some action on an asset, resulting in the attributes of an incident, i.e. how it was affected. In this case, the action exploits a vulnerability in the asset. An incident is when there is an actual loss or imminent threat of loss, otherwise it is an event. There is a standard for incident handling, which is NIST SP861, and that defines an incident as a computer security incident is a violation or imminent threat of violation of computer security policies, acceptable use policies or standard security practices. So slightly differing uh, definitions of an incident, but essentially, it's a, um, think of it as a threat acting on a vulnerability to cause an actual uh, economic loss. So in handling an incident, and this is from the NIST standard, there is a life cycle which starts with preparation for handling the incident, the detection and analysis phase, uh, that's followed by a containment, eradication and recovery. And then there's some activities that you take post-incident. And of course, in each of these stages, they can cycle back either to the beginning um, or between the detection and analysis and containment, eradication and recovery. Before we go into those processes, though, let's just note uh, something about the concept of a hackback. Um, in the process of an investigation and remediation, there may be the temptation to take direct action against hackers. This is known as hackback. Now, this is uh, commercial organizations undertaking this type of activity, not law enforcement or nation states. Very few organizations or governments think that this is a good idea, despite some enthusiasm from certain politicians in the US and the UK. Uh, it's important to remember that there is no legal basis for it as hacking back may involve other countries, other infrastructure and is an innocent third parties and this is one of the main problems. The biggest problem, um, however, is attribution. It is very, very difficult to actually definitively uh, attribute an incident to a particular person or persons or groups, even to a particular country. And so if you're going to take action against them, you wouldn't want to do it on the basis of the skills of attribution as they exist today. Finally, it's not the role of a business to engage in cyber actions, and this should be left to legal authorities. And so that is the argument that most organizations would take. So not all in, in organizations can afford a dedicated incident response team, but they're a team that is put together to handle an incident and uh, essentially accumulate a variety of skills. So on the technical side, um, there needs to be cybersecurity skills, programming, IT networks, and forensic. Combined with that, however, there needs to be communication skills and personnel that are, are dedicated to communicating uh, about the cyber and security incident to senior staff in the organization and then potentially, depending on the nature of the incident, to outside that organization. Uh, if you're thinking of a job in this area, it's a stressful environment, um, and usually people are on call 24-7, uh, because incidents obviously can happen at any time of day or night, and need to be responded to um, very fast, uh, not only for actually finding out what went wrong, but to remediate that and get the business functioning again. So the whole process of an uh, incident response team could be involved in security awareness trainer, training and also information sharing with other companies and also with the various uh, organizations uh, that nationally look after cybersecurity incidents like CERTs, CERTs, 
and what are called Isaacs. Um, incident response teams normally have a jump bag, uh, which is essentially a collection of hardware and information needed for handling a response. So in the first phase, uh, incidents uh, really need to be detected and they can come to light through a variety of different means, but essentially alerts can be raised through an intrusion detection protection system, anti-malware software, which might notice that um, somebody has been subjected to malware on their computer, email or over the network. Users noting irregular behavior on their computers or accounts uh, or even mobile phones um, and breach data surfacing on the dark web or other criminal sites. Uh, another way of uh, this coming to light is security researchers potentially alerting a, an organization um, that data has appeared or is vulnerable, uh, in which case it would be counted as a breach, um, even though it's not absolutely clear if anybody would have had access to it other than researchers themselves. There is a uh, metric that's associated with detection called dwell time, and that's the amount of time an attacker spent on a system before detection determined. And detection was determined. So uh, the mean time to detect and mean time to respond or remediate um, gives you the dwell time. So in 2011, dwell time, just to give you a sense of uh, how long people can actually be on a network or have attacked and being detected, was around 416 days, so well over a year. Uh, by 2020, with the focus on cybersecurity, that had improved dramatically to 24 days, but that is still um, an extensive amount of, of time. External detection, as in detecting um, uh, an attack or uh, hackers on your network from outside the, the, uh, the organization, on average takes about 73 days. Internal detection um, is down to 12 days. In the US, uh, in one survey, 60% uh, of uh, detections were internal and 40% were external. The main reason for improvement is not necessarily sophistication, but the increased incidence of ransomware. And um, it was just sort of interesting because uh, we're not necessarily getting any better at detecting it, but the, ran the actual attacks are becoming so obvious that we can't actually ignore it. And this all comes from a report by Mandiant, um, their FireEye report in 2021. And you can see from the graph that um, although there is a peak of uh, detection with 0 to 7, there's a long tail that actually stretches out to a very long period of time where people can actually inhabit in the network. If you remember, ANU found hackers on their network and they had been on the network uh, for well over a year uh, by the time that they were detected. Uh, and in some organizations, it may just be a permanent feature of their network. So in the detection and analysis phase, the team are trying to answer the questions who, what, where, why, and how. They have to be careful since incidents may be the subject of criminal proceedings, and so evidence needs to be collected to preserve what's called a chain of custody. So for uh, that evidence to be admissible in courts, depending on the jurisdiction in which it operates in, uh, there needs to be a clear um, and process by which evidence is gathered, collected and stored so that the, uh, the court um, won't throw it out because um, it may have been tampered with, altered from the point of collection to the point of presentation in the court. Uh, this requires special equipment that can be shown not to alter the information, for example, from a disk copy or during the examination of a computer. And that's sort of the area of forensics um, but uh, uh, there's various equipment that is sort of uh, specifically set up so that it can't write um, and can be proven to not be able to write and it can just read. 
So detection is simpler if a system and network operation procedures are set up in a way to facilitate this. So if an organization understands normal behaviors, um, have logs and a log retention policy, uh, perform event correlation, so that's where events may be being raised by various detection systems and um, in the, that they have in your network. And part of the role of looking for incidents is actually taking these events, putting them together and deciding whether they actually uh, point to an incident happening or having happened. Keeping all host clocks synchronized, even uh, that might be considered a trivial point, but of course, when you're actually doing the analysis, it's uh, made very much harder if one system is uh, using a clock which is not actually correct. Um, and so it's very hard to timestamp to be able to establish a sequence of events if you can't trust the times that you're reading from files or processes or other logs. Uh, using packet sniffers on the network uh, for additional data. Um, and finally, uh, being prepared to get help when necessary. Uh, a large number of organizations won't do that because they're very concerned with making public the fact that they have uh, uh, been breached or had an, an incident. And so in the past, they may have been reticent of sharing that information with law enforcement or other agencies.